It's Thursday, February 20th, and time for your Barbados Today morning news update. The crime and violence plague in the region will be treated as a public health crisis. That was one of the many decisions taken by leaders at the just concluded 31st CARICOM intersessional meeting here in Barbados. CARICOM Chairman Prime Minister Mia Motley told a press conference at the end of the two day summit that it was also agreed that the issue was not a matter strictly for governments, and as a result, other stakeholders would be invited in the near future to make contributions on how to deal with the worrying problem. Violence in the context of the Caribbean today and crime are effectively public health disorders, public health disease. And to that extent, we believe that it is critical that we bring together not only the heads of government of the region in a summit, but also partners um, from faith-based organizations to artists to sports people to teachers to CARFA, which is the Caribbean Public Health um, Organization, to members of the private sector, in order for us to have full and frank discussions about how we as a region, not as individual governments, but as a region, will begin to contain the difficulties that individual communities and countries are experiencing because of a change in behavior, a change in values, a change in attitudes. And we believe that the conversation cannot take place simply at the level of government or law enforcement, but that if we are to win the battle in the medium term, that we need to treat to this as a national and regional discussion an action plan that will see players across every sector of society being invited. In other news, the increase in water rates and the introduction of the garbage and sewage contribution levy is impacting on the bottom line of one of this country's largest beverage companies. However, the Barbados Bottling Company Limited has assured consumers that the prices of its products will remain the same. The BBC's general manager, Andre Thomas, made the disclosure following a tour of the Newton Christchurch facility by Minister of Energy and Water Resources, Wilfred Abrams, and officials from the Barbados Water Authority yesterday. We source our water from the Water Authority Municipal Supply, like any, any other manufacturer, um, and we pay heavily for it. The GSE, of course, I, I have a philosophy, Barbados is a very small market and the critical mass for any business regardless of the size in this country is very delicate so any impact on the performance of the business financial performance will have a significant impact on not only bottom line the ability to operate so yes the the, the increase in water rates and GSE tax impacted our business heavily our, our costs went up probably by 30 40 percent but at the end of the day, I mean, we, we, we're part of the environment and we want to protect the environment. So anything that is useful to assist in doing so, we, we support. Barbadian students pursuing studies at the tertiary level must give back to the country. Education Minister Santia Bradshaw made the announcement at yesterday's launch of the Give Back program. The initiative will see students at the University of the West Indies, the Barbados Community College, and the Erdiston Teachers Training College accessing government scholarships for their studies, giving back 100 to 150 hours of their time. Now, while we regard the restoration of the payment of tuition fees for students at the university as one of the critical measures needed to build the foundation for new national growth. We also recognize that a stagnant economy cannot be revitalized without a trained, empowered, equipped workforce, nor can it be revitalized with heavily indebted customers. And it is with this in mind that this administration also recognizes, as Tiffany said, that to whom much is given, much is also expected. We therefore see this investment in education as having a consequential civic responsibility, which requires each beneficiary to be engaged in give back service to their community and indeed to their country. It is hoped that this initiative will become the catalyst for a national movement which will inspire Barbadians of all walks of life to give back. 
It's been a challenging year for the Barbados Nurses Association. Addressing the BNA's 83rd annual general meeting last evening, President Joanna Waterman disclosed that the body has been grappling with outstanding debt and industrial unrest. She also expressed concern over the hesitancy of some in the profession to join the association and breaches in nursing practices. It is with disappointment that despite all efforts, nurses continue to show apathy in joining the professional association. Following a series of walkthroughs and investigation of Queen Elizabeth Hospital on the heels of negative press, it was discovered that there was serious breaches of nursing practice in the form of refusing to hand over patients' reports and non-compliance with procedures related to dangerous drugs keys, the Dangerous Drugs Act. In possession of the keys and handling. It was all related to possession of the keys and handling of the keys, or let me say a lack of, which has legal implications for the practice of nursing. BNA will be notifying the regulatory body, the Nursing Council of Barbados, of these breaches in nursing practice with expectation of appropriate action. The Barbados Alliance to End Homelessness is hoping that government will make provisions for a subvention in the upcoming budget to help keep its doors open. President Kima Safri says the four-week-old, 90-bed Spry Street shelter needed some $25,000 in operational costs. He made the disclosure during a visit by Governor General Dame Sandra Mason yesterday. We've had meetings, several meetings with the Minister of People's Department and Elder Affairs and Minister Ford. Um, we've had meeting up, two meetings up to this year, two meetings up to la uh, several meetings up to this year, uh, two meetings up to last week. I know the Ministry of Finance have called for us to be able to produce the finances that they need. We've all successfully done that and we are just waiting for the estimates to be laid and that passes to if we'll be successful in, being, in receiving money. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. Regionally, CARICOM leaders have agreed to send a fact-finding mission to Haiti to get a first-hand look and find a solution to the ongoing social and political unrest in the French-speaking member country, where opposition parties are demanding the removal of President Jovenel Moïse. Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt said the mission will be led by CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Irwin LaRocque and will include representatives from the Bahamas, Jamaica and Barbados. We recognize that this situation is very complex in nature and um, the issues there are also of a complex nature as well. And in discussing, we also recognize that there are many different views on the way forward. But we all accepted the situation cannot continue uh, with no uh, intervention um, on the part of CARICOM. And in that regard, we've agreed uh, to dispatch a team of senior officials led by the Secretary General, Ambassador Larocque, uh, to visit Haiti and to meet with all relevant stakeholders so that we can find um, some kind of, first of all, to know exactly what's happening on the ground, engaging stakeholders, but also seeking to devise a strategy of how CARICOM can assist Haiti in resolving this issue. Because if we, it is felt that if we do not help address the domestic issue confronting Haiti, we will continue to have tremendous negative impacts on countries like the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas, um, who are seeing a, a a large number of, of um, migrants coming in uh, to these countries and, and creating some, some domestic challenges for them. And finally, 
German police are reporting that at least eight people were killed in two shooting incidents late on Wednesday in the city of Hanau. Police special units are chasing an unknown number of suspects who fled the scene of the attack in the city. According to local media reports, three people were killed in front of a bar and the other five in front of a similar establishment. Police say the motive for the attack was still unclear. That's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.